Здравствуйте, начинаем нашу очередную пресс-конференцию. Also, the day that we picked to hold this press conference is symbolic, uh, 1937, late October 20th, 29th, 20th, uh, 30th, uh, three dozens of Belarusian intellectuals were shot by the NKVD and they were buried here in Kuropata in Minsk. So there will be a campaign for, to commemorate that. Also, a reminder, the press conference is interpreted into English simultaneously, so you can use, you, you can choose the channel in the lower right corner of Zoom, the globe icon. Your questions, uh, please feel free to type them into the chat box, paste them into the chat box. To that end, it would be good if you could please rename yourselves in Zoom to match the format, your full name and your media outlet. This will make our QA session smoother. We'll be able to understand who is asking the question and we'll relay it to the speakers. Uh, the speakers of our today's conference are Zoe Belachvostik, uh, people's artist, uh, act actress of Belarus, uh, Kowalski theater star. Uh, good afternoon. Right. Uh, also, we have Olga Sparaga, a philosopher, PhD in philosophy. Uh, she's the representative of the main uh, body of the Coordination Council. Hello, Olga. And we have uh, Sergey Butkin, journalist, producer, one of the leaders of the Cultural Solidarity Fund, or CSF. Right. Good afternoon, everyone. Anna Severinets uh, was also supposed uh, to join us, was supposed to join us, but she's experiencing technical problems. So we're looking forward to her joining us later. Uh, I say we start without her. Uh, let us begin by a brief introduction, a brief intro before we move forward to the QA session. Uh, Zoya Belachvostik, you have the floor. Could you please talk about the situation with the Kupalovsky Theater, uh, what happened there, the reprisals, uh, people that were chased out of the company, uh, in a nutshell, please. No, the problem is that our arrest is us being fired and everything that happened uh, to the Kupalovsky Theater. Uh, we are completely free, uh, free as in we have nothing nothing that we used to have. Uh, this, these reprisals started way before August. It was the pre-election campaign, it was the presidential campaign when the Kupala, Kupalovsky theater actors, uh, they started making statements after Viktor Babarika was imprisoned. Uh, our artificial director, Mikhail Pegida, signed a letter to support Viktor Babarika, and then the uh, our director, Pavel Latushka, started receiving requests to fire all those who made statements. Of, of, co of course, he didn't do that. And when that uh, horrible uh, bloodshed happened, uh, that bloody war after the August the 9th, the first person to reach out to me was my daughter, Valentina Garcuyeva. She said, we, we must do something quickly. We cannot stay silent. And then our youth uh, recorded the first appeal. After that first appeal, where our statements, uh, our requests uh, were voiced, uh, again, Pavel Latushka received uh, requests uh, from the ministry, and not just that, probably, uh, uh, in order to write up and uh, in order to fire all these people who made this uh, joint address. 15 people, a dozen and a half, I cannot remember exactly. And uh, he also refused uh, to comply, and then he was fired. And you know how we uh, supported him? We all of us uh, resigned. We wrote those appeals almost every day. There were fewer people in our recent uh, session, were more than 100. Uh, now there are 63 of, 63 of us, and we are happy to be there, 63 of us. Uh, we are happy to be there to do something, to work. Uh, it's very challenging for us because we are facing uh, opposition, we are facing persecution, although we are happy to be together and we're happy to have done a lot by now. Uh, first and foremost, possibly, uh, the most important thing is that uh, we staged a uh, play, the locals, uh, that we 
wanted to celebrate or to, we wanted to commemorate our time. Uh, it was a challenging conditions. Every day we were afraid that we will be uh, deprived of this opportunity to, to stage that play, but I, ultimately we were able to even record it and uh, show it uh, to those who visited us, uh, friends, journalists, uh, they were able to attend as viewers, as audience. We always uh, meet those who wish to meet us. Uh, we do concerts with students, with journalists, uh, although we're quite cautious. Uh, we need to be free. We need to, we need to stay out of prison to be able to do more. So that, that hands the caution. And we've been trying hard to get this opportunity to sell tickets, to sell tickets. Uh, good people offered us their premises. We wanted to stage the Tutesha, the locals. We wanted to do a concert. I also have a creative evening where I'm talking about my theatrical dynasty uh, that stems from my great great grandfather. But since the Ministry of uh, Culture uh, does not give us its permission, uh, well, basically, our cause is blocked. They, they, they shut the door before in, in front of our faces. So we just uh, go from premise to premise, from venue to venue, and we sing. Uh, most importantly, today, we will definitely go to the Koropate Memorial, Koropate Cemetery. Uh, so the way uh, three people, at least, I didn't quite catch the number because of the buggy sound. And uh, when the Koropate rally uh, ends, uh, the rest of the Kopalovsky stars will join us. The stars and the young actors, uh, they will join us. They will read out uh, the memoirs, uh, letters, diaries. I believe that these recitals will be interesting. This would be our way to commemorate those who are, well, our Golgofa, our uh, Requiem. We need to do something uh, that uh, we need to do, uh, that they haven't been able to do. All, okay, I would like to talk to all the journalists, to all those wishing to ask questions, uh, to Zoya Belahostik. Please, you can do so. Uh, sh unfortunately, she can only be with us uh, for another 20 minutes, so please do that promptly. If you have questions to Zoya about the Kupalovsky Theater, about the company, about the events, uh, please uh, do so. Uh, quickly, so that we can uh, we can relay uh, that question, uh, those questions of yours to her before she leaves. Thank you, Zoya. Olga, would you like to offer some intro? Yes. Uh, thank you very much for the invitation. First of all, I have not yet first researched what what was happening in the field of protest. I'm not able to voice everything, but definitely the Belarusian protest is smart, is creative. It's smart because it uses technology and it's also uh, relying on women. The women's faces play a role. These forms of creative protests are highly professional because we see that uh, even uh, the exhibitions of protest art uh, are, uh, abroad and mass culture as well. The professional art, uh, mass art, uh, they combined in June, everything started from, from the evolution when Haim Sutin, uh, Haim Sutin's uh, uh, picture was arrest around Eva. There was a movement around this. The artists got mobilized. Uh, various artists, various domains, they offered their own response to the situation with Eve. Uh, we know that Nikita Monich was fired for, for his poem. In June, when there was a merger of the headquarters, Antonina Slabochikov, the, art, uh, the, the artist, uh, made a symbol, this heart, and the victory sign. The, two fingers, uh, V sign. So the three three symbols that became the uh, symbol of the movement. Uh, in June, July, uh, artists in various domains, again, they made statements, uh, they encouraged uh, union, uh, uniting. In August, there were new formats, forms uh, of cultural protests that were related to the repressions, to the terror that the authorities uh, threw at people. There was a cult, cult protest, cultural protest, uh, posters uh, collection, the artists started getting the posters, and they are displayed on the global stage of the contemporary art. Concerts at the Philharmonic also started, uh, that uh, spread across the place. 
концы, музыканты записывали. Continued performances by artists. The musicians recorded various bands recorded their new 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 tracks. Uh, there was a campaign at the Art Palace, Palace of Arts. Uh, that one artist was imprisoned uh, for 15 days. Uh, they, they barged in into her house. Uh, very tough uh, crackdown by the authorities. Uh, the message uh, that they sent, the cultural protest has been noticed. It plays its important role and the authorities are taking heed of that. However, all of that continued and we then saw in September the cultural protests take to the streets. We saw how much creative, how much creativity, you, know, you saw the, 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 the posters, the banners, the, the pictures, uh, carried. Uh, in October there was prison art uh, and statements, utterances to that topic. Also in October there was uh, yard art, backyard, courtyard art. And the philosophers would have said that this social imagination function finally encompassed all the society, encircled everyone. Uh, everything that was happening before was not in vain. The Kupalovsky theater there was also a huge, uh, huge uh, protest outcry. The, ways to manifest uh, the protest moods in the Belarusian society. I believe all this is related to the, to the protest that is geared towards the expression of criticism, lack of agreement, disagreement with what uh, the government is doing, but also the uh, embodiment of the new society that we want to live in. We see that by the flags, we see that by the new forms that are being sought and found. Uh, this protest, smart, creative, women protest, uh, it will evolve, it will change its form. And this is a huge impetus uh, for our future democratic, uh, for our democratic future. Thank you so much. I also wanted to give the floor to Sergei Butkin uh, for a brief introduction, introductory address. Uh, please, Sergei, in a nutshell, briefly about the activities of the fund. What uh, can you talk about the situation that uh, precipitated the formation of this uh, fund? How much time do I have? Well, a couple minutes easily, and then afterwards we will refine uh, your statements or so everything you have to say, and probably there will questions that will follow. Our fund is only three weeks old, but we we have the feeling that it's three years old because uh, it's it's been an eventful time, very many factors that we need to work with, very uh, very many cries for help, literally. Uh, the thing is, the existing funds do not cover all the needs, and they cannot handle all the requests that come in, especially from the uh, artists, or, or artistic persons. Uh, they are fired, they have been fired, they have been um, deprived of the opportunity to implement them, to realize themselves, the, I mean, the freelancers, the artists, the actors that can do concerts and so on and so forth, they've been deprived of this opportunity. So this requires the various forms of support, and we want to fine-tune all that, to arrange all that. As I've mentioned, it's been only three weeks. Uh, the help that can be rendered 100% uh, is the help with resignations, because we are working across the wall uh, from uh, people who can also help. I'm doing everything I can to make sure we do that promptly. Everyone who was fired because of their political views, uh, they would uh, receive some, at least some payment. Uh, and then the, even those people that the creative uh, the creative people that got this uh, uh, money uh, they asked what can we do next what is there to be done next so one of the directions to help right now we are talking to an entity that I'm not uh, going to disclose it with European entities or uh, we wanted them to hire uh, the opera stars that were fired we, to, we, we, we need their help. Well, psychological support, moral support is also needed. There is a page uh, that with the, with the functions uh, that we can work for. It's, uh, the, you see the link in the chat box. If you were fired, you can write about that. And you can also suggest your or propose your cultural project, because the creativity that the or creative people uh, display during this protest, it it uh, is worthy of, well, it's mesmerizing, and it, it need, and it needs support because the creative people need to be supported. There are projects, uh, there are 
ways to find uh, that there are new ways uh, to find these projects that need to be found we are uh, we're gathering partners those creative people uh, those uh, intellectuals that voice their position they suffered and we are prepared to help them with with the best uh, with the best way we can I'll briefly talk about the uh, outcomes of our activity. Well, one, one day is akin to one month, uh, very saturated, very eventful. You must know about the letter about uh, from the activists of Belarusian culture. Over 1,000 people signed. Uh, and uh, it, it was really popularized. Some of the people that signed it were fired. We helped them. Uh, Zoe Belachvostik is there. I wish to thank her for, for her courage because the 22, uh, the, the video address, so uh, filming 22 stars, uh, it started with her. Uh, that video address that she, uh, that she uh, reminded, that, that she brought up, was uh, really popular. It went uh, mass scale across the internet and people started also to speak up and they, they were also being fired because of that. So we are reaching out to people that were fired recently let me pull up a few stats here. Ну это медиа каналы, потому что Well, it's media channels mostly. Because unfortunately there hasn't been a single media channel to show or to display what the creative people were doing and what was happening to them as a result as, as an aftermath. So everything used to be uh well, uh, everything used to be spread across the place. Now the uh, tuzinfm.by is one of the oldest uh, websites in the Belarusian uh, internet and binet. Uh, it's 17 years old. It uh, was dedicated to the Belarusian language, to Belarusian music. Uh, now it's about the culture of protest, uh, cultural protest. Uh, our journalists also work there uh, by, by culture. Uh, so to Facebook, Twitter is uh, to follow. We are starting the global campaign to engage uh, international stars uh, to bring awareness uh, to, as to what's happening in Belarus. The solidarity auction started uh, recently. If somebody w wishes to support the creative people through that, uh, there are two prominent uh, people. The one who gu guitarist uh, contributed his guitar to be sold at this charity auction. Uh, and uh, this this way would be if somebody buys that guitar for example and other lots uh, they will be able to support the creative people in belarus well that's it because i can i can really talk volumes here okay uh, so thank you very much there are questions about the activity of the fund we'll come back to you i would not uh, i would like to ask the questions uh, that have come in for zoya uh, you need to leave in 10 minutes so we have Питання для Вольги от Вольги. We have a question from Olga from Belarus Belarusian Radio Rация. Самые ганебные приклады. What are the most uh, adverse examples of uh, strike breakers uh, of of those who refuse to support the strike that you have seen? And secondly, uh, is uh, the Kupala uh, Theater Company able to find its way beyond the building of the Kupalovsky Theater? Well, the second question, it's very difficult to exist uh, outside of this. Uh, we cannot sell uh, tickets, we don't have a venue. For this reason, we are kind of a self-organized, amateur, like creative circle. We're just like gypsies that are roaming, uh, somebody lets us in, somebody doesn't, so people meet with us. That's that's how we live beyond the building. Uh, as, as for those people who refuse to strike, uh, well, the strike breakers... Uh, uh, well, I, I have an example like that. Uh, there was a theater that was called the Free Stage, Volna Scena. When our director, Mazinski, was being fired uh, for his... Uh, for his uh, outlook, for his uh, position, civil stance. I know that there were uh, suggestions to, to two directors to, to replace him, to replace him, but uh, director uh, Zinin and director Garzuev said we will not go there, we will not replace uh, uh, director Mazinski to be in charge of that theater. 
However, there was another guy, I, I'm not sure whether I should uh, name his last name, but uh, he said that, yes, I will do what you want. He met, uh, he met the company and they, they, met, they, of course, they stomped their feet. They said, go away. Although he fired the majority of uh, actors, uh, he selected some of his students uh, from the University of Culture and the theater, the Volna stage, uh, the free stage theater became totally different. Those youngsters are really innocent. They were young. They did. They were none the wiser. They simply didn't didn't know better. I believe that yes, this was a strike breaking the example that I can give. Okay, another question to you from Andrei Moskvin from uh, Universitet of Warsawski, Warsaw University. The first question. Do you have some Facebook page or community where we can follow what you're doing? Yes, we have our inst uh, Instagram, uh, the free Kupala uh, actors and actresses. We start, uh, we, we try to publish everything there. How it started? Start, started from the Sam is the musician after Yakub Kolos' uh, poem. Uh, yes, on, on YouTube. On YouTube, uh, this, uh, this is available on YouTube. And another question from the same uh, asker, Andrei Moskvin. Uh, it's very important uh, to not just uh, recite uh, the poems and pieces uh, of uh, the people that, uh, of, of the poets that were killed. Uh, today's uh, people like Eduard Akulin uh, can be also recited. Uh, can you collect something like that and, re and recite those uh, works? Yes, I think we can. It's just we need to reach out to the Kupala uh, people. Uh, we are overloaded with work, but we will definitely uh, put this on our table, uh, put, put this on our plate as well. It's just to reach out to us. You can you can uh, message uh, every uh, any uh, Kupala company member, and you will, we will also uh, take that on. I see no problem in implementing that. Okay, there's another one to you, Zoya, since uh, you're you'll go to the uh, campaign that you mentioned in the Kurapate. This is the question. Why are you using... Uh, this is from Carl Fredriksson, Vox Europe. You're making this cultural reference, uh, the, ninth, uh, the night from 29th to 30th October 1937. What would be its role in, in this year's protests? Why are you drawing this parallel? Well, the thing is, I believe that uh, this most uh, severe pressure and blow was delivered, well, as, as people have said, uh, well, Eva was being targeted. Uh, this is the best parallel that, can, we, that, we, that we can draw. We were the first ones to be kicked out from, the, from our uh, Kupala theater home. It's our home theater. It's, uh, uh, on the eve of our 100th uh, anniversary, our centennial. So this horrible uh, killing of our poets that were young, uh, beautiful, uh, and they were uh, slaughtered like that. They, they, they were killed because of what they did. We cannot uh, really let that go unanswered. We can only uh, take that uh, relay baton and we should run on. We should get up and uh, finish what they what they tried to, but but, but couldn't. Okay. Okay. Last question for you, Zoya. In the current situation, how do we build the relations with those uh, who are taking a silent stance or taking a silent stance or are neutral? We don't know themselves what to do with those or how to work with those. I believe that we will simply ignore, uh, I, I will simply ignore uh, the bad mouthing, uh, the libel. We don't need that. Uh, we, we're just wasting our resources, our efforts uh, on that. I'm trying to notice everything that's uh, being thrown at us, the, the bad mouthing. Uh, so we, we should uh, not take offense. We should realize that the people who are staying, say, staying silent, who are not supporting, or vice versa, even are accusing us of that the Kupala theater company destroyed the theater, that, we're, that we're, we've committed treason and so on. 
Well, what am I supposed to do? To, to just call them back treason? The, the, well, those who committed treason. We have better things to do. We need to keep our heart and nerves in order. It's just those people simply don't know. They don't feel anything. Uh, nothing aches in them. It's the people that do not want to listen. They choose not to see. They choose not to listen. They turn the blind eye and they really, they are, their heart does not ache. Uh, these are the people who remained in the, I don't know, what, what kind of century. We have a, a war of civilizations and we don't want uh, Belarus uh, to be left in some cave, to, left, to be left behind in some cave or something. That's it. I just don't want to focus any attention on that. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much for being with us, uh, Zoya. Uh, you're free to go now, so thank you so much for, for your contribution. Thank you. Until we see each other again. Right, there's a question from Andrei Moskvin, also from the chat box, uh, to Olga. I believe that uh, this is the question about the Belarusian protest culture. How do we co collect it all and publish it? Well, it, it could take a hundred books uh, to publish it all. I don't know, because there's so many fields, so many areas and domains where it's where it's happening. It's, it's multi-format. I also know that the German editions are, have started supporting some projects, uh, some individual projects. But all of that takes research. For, for quite some time, I've been collecting stuff that was happening in the contemporary uh, art uh, uh, domain hoping and thinking that uh, other people, other curators uh, are making notes, collecting references, links, uh, but that's too much work. That's, that's a lot of work. It's not just documenting the past. It's also making it for the sake of the future. It's very important, uh, all these books, and not just books, the expos, the fairs, the exhibitions, various ways to talk about that, to multiply this experience, these formats. Uh, it, it's, it's more than books. There's so many, uh, there's a multitude of new ideas, new books, LGBTQ, this appeal uh, of the artists, uh, everyone, the LGBTQ performance, so many nuances there, so many shades uh, to contextualize it correctly. It takes work, it takes a lot of effort to show this uh, diverse, uh, profound statements. Okay, thank you. A question to Sergei Budkin from Olga Semashka from Belarus, Belarus and Radio Ratsia. The first question, how many people have been helped by the fund by now? And the second question, what are the funds that, uh, uh, what, what, what is the fund uh, replenishing its, its resources, the money? Sergei, unmute your mic, please. Okay, I can give the uh, general statistics uh, that I have uh, in principle about the support to, the, to those who have been fired. If you want specific figures, uh, 1,042,377 euros uh, were paid out. Uh, 634 people have received uh, this money. So by soul, the, the activists uh, of uh, the Belarusian culture, it's impossible to distinguish them from the main well the, the, the database is huge there's so many uh, so much data and only two, pe two people to process it because uh, well we started uh, working with with Rusia, but uh, she uh, well uh, agreed to stay in this fund uh, as, a, as a member of the steering council so right now we are gathering a team well, there are multiple directions that we want to work along. Uh, we just need to work. Maybe in, in, in several several weeks from now, I'll be able to answer this question in more detail, uh, please. Uh, you have my contacts. Uh, feel free to come my way later on. Okay, there's another question to you. How can you help the students uh, that are uh, fired from the Academy of Arts? Uh, yes, expelled. Yes, fired. By fired, I mean expelled. Uh, from the Academy of Arts in Minsk. Well, for every case, uh, there must be some individual uh, follow-up. Well, all of Belarus have, has their own situation. 
I know specific uh, cases of uh, people being fired. So these uh, payments will be channeled to them. So we need to, to spend half a day to discuss every every type of case uh, that could be. Uh, the students, uh, somebody else uh, is controlling that. Um. Right, so I'll hunt for the questions now. There was a question to Olga. Give me a sec. The question to Olga Sparaga. What is your philosophical outlook on things happening right now in Belarus? Well, it's a bit of a generic question. Well, my philosophical outlook is that uh, revolu revolution changes are happening. We uh, call them evolution, but now we're hoping that we're switching to revolution from authoritarian to democratic uh, system. And something that's happening right now is the way for the new democratic institutions, uh, horizontal links, uh, societies uh, to come together. We as NGOs, we've, we've been dreaming for ages to have more uh, wonderful people like that around us. And now we see that our society, it's significant, significant part, the capable part of our society. It's uh, knowledgeable and competent enough to run this country. So in one of my interviews, I said that and I, I keep uh, hearing that from others. We don't need uh, uh, strong leaders. We need a strong society. And this uh, strong society is being formed as we speak. So that, that's really in a nutshell. Otherwise, uh, I could again speak for hours. Okay, a question from Marek Beckerman from Media Tower. The question to both uh, Sergey and Olga. So this question is in English. Let me try to uh, translate it into Russian. Is targeting cultural figures like yourself a sign of desperation that the system can no longer identify where the change is coming from? So this is the question. Olga, Sergey, who is with us? Olga, Sergey. Yes, it's. Деятели культуры, ну как бы для репрессий. Значит, yes, the system is trying to target various people, specific people. So now it. It's targeting everything across the board. So our interpreter, Yuri, has uh, translated that. So is targeting cultural figures like yourself a sign of desperation that the system can no longer identify where the change is coming from? So they're targeting everyone across the board, basically. Olga, will you start? Yes, I, I do have an answer to that one. According to the, based on the conversations, uh, the, the investigators, the KGB people, those horrible people from the secret services, uh, they're talking to us and they are trying to look for organizers in a very direct manner. And there is a lack of understanding or the, the, the lack of recognition that the entity of change is the society as a whole, not specific people. I also think that it's quite difficult to identify that, to, to, to acknowledge that, to reconcile with that. It's uh, very difficult to imprison the entire society and they're trying to gun for organizers. The system is trying to protect itself, it's itself that way. From the one hand, it's the lack of uh, will, lack of power. Uh, the, over these 27 years, uh, the law enforcement has become strong enough to, uh, to, to hold its grip tightly in the Belarusian society. The sectivization of the society, the search for various uh, channels and tools uh, to cope with this law enforcement uh, grip, uh, that's what's necessary. I also have a brief uh, elaboration on that. How do I word this? Uh, the people of the system are in such a dimension that they cannot really understand, that they cannot figure out uh, that there can be, uh, that, that, that there are no coordinators, that the society can coordinate itself. So technically that there are people in the courtyard, the backyard concerts. Uh, well, there's, there's simply none. 
people just get together and do it. So for this reason, the people of the system, they're trying to, trying to uh, target people like Denis Dudinsky, other people, uh, they're trying to target those uh, various individuals. Uh, they, they rush around in panic, they imprison everyone in sight, and so, well, this is propelling them towards the end very quickly. It's an inevitable process, it's, it's, it's a comic scene. Well, I'll just refer to the video that I haven't been able to, uh, it's, it's from the Telegram. Oh, well, 15 years, if, uh, well, the, the working people are saying that, uh, so one, one guy is like trolling the law enforcement guy, saying that uh, I will not smoke for 15 days and I'll, I'll run marathon for 15 days. Well, the playlist of uh, Obon, the right policeman, it's, it's very uh, easy to guess uh, who those people are. So we want these people to speak out, uh, against, speak up against the violence and against, uh, uh, against the oppression to just leave these people without any cultural background and then they will just uh, run stale all of us all of them will okay there's a question to both uh, olga and sergey belarusian protest art uh, what are the unique elements of it uh, if there are any well we need to understand that we need to research research that well, first of all, it's multitude. It's uh, a huge diversity, as I've mentioned. We've seen uh, women's art, some traditional art forms that went political. Various bands take part in this music. So again, the multitude, the diversity of the forms, uh, of the contents, of the tools, uh, of manifestation of the protest. Uh, it's it's uh, very hard to encompass. And it's also collective statements, uh, how quickly the artists, uh, prominent figures in various domains uh, got together and spoke up. Uh, we've used to criticize our culture, our society for the lack of trust to each other, for lack of ties and connections. And now, bam, we have a whole lot of collective statements, collective utterances by people. The political dimension is the third part, politization. We lack that political dimension. It was suppressed in culture. And now, again, bam, people are suddenly finding this, pinpointing this, profound uh, forms of political statements. Uh, the fourth bit is the feminist dimension, because uh, one of the people, one of the citizens' uh, slogans is that uh, he's beating me, so he'll, he'll go to prison. I saw an elderly person, an elderly guy, uh, carrying this shield, carrying this uh, slogan. So, again, uh, Belarus, like Lukashenko says, I will not uh, give Belarus away, he's strangling it with, with blue fingers. Uh, and now there is uh, the feminist language that the society is talking back with. It's, it's an aggression, it's uh, violence, I do not want to live with an aggressor, in, I do not want to share a home with one. So this uh, feminist uh, utterance is, is also like penetrating throughout uh, all those statements. Uh, and the spontaneity, I don't know how Belarusian that is, uh, but one form of protest, one form of uh, statements is given form to, is giving way to another. So this spontaneity is uh, really uh, without end. Regionalization, we've been talking about the regionalization of the protest movement, and we see that this creativity is also encompassing the, all of Belarus. Okay, thank you. Sergey, anything you wish to elaborate on that? Well, my main observation that I would like to share in this respect, uh, one of the most popular phrases in the interview with cultural figures, I've been working as a journalist for two decades, uh, the most uh, well uh, cited uh, statement was, we are beyond politics. Uh, various artists and artistic people said that. I haven't heard this phrase for, for at least two months. Since summertime, this phrase is gone from their vocabulary. So everybody realized that, uh, that there's nothing beyond policy. That it's their lives. They cannot be just decoupled from this process, disconnected from these processes. And the people, most importantly, they realize that they can influence on that. They can, uh, they can uh, work uh, their creative output, songs, poems. Uh, they can actually make a difference. 
uh, not everyone can make a public uh, video address and uh, resign. Uh, but well, somebody from the uh, orchestra, a member of the orchestra can just uh, raise a flag and wave it, uh, wave it. The Philharmonic, uh, the choir and the balaclavas uh, uh, in the hoods. Uh, well, there's people on the on the steps of the Philharmonic. We would have uh, believed that to be some kind of uh, fantastic movie. It's uh, science fiction, sci-fi, and uh, this weird feeling that you get walking around and seeing that uh, you're kind of in a, in a sci-fi movie. And the people that were uh, three months ago, they they uh, were making interviews with prominent artists uh, like Bell South Music Live. Uh, they said, please, uh, no politics. Two months from then, they are uh, giving a song, a video clip with uh, shots with uh, uh, feed from meetings, from rallies, from campaigns. So it's like the nation was born in, uh, within two months. Something that would have taken quite some time since 1994, uh, through all these discussions, through all these periods, time frames, we just uh, flew right past those two decades in two months. And I'm not afraid, uh, we're, we're unique in that. I'm not afraid to admit that we are unique in that. These two decades have been passed in two months. Okay, uh, I also wanted to uh, mention the contemporary technology. We see how uh, backyard communities uh, shoot their own videos, how the social media is uh, actively used. So it's a very techy form. This is a very high techy protest, uh, smart art, uh, smart protest. That's also, on the one hand, it's professionalism and artists uh, broadly, the artistic people are also using the language that the broader public can relate to. So it's very interesting to see that. And uh, of course, there are more professional statements, uh, but uh, as a whole, uh, the multitude of these projects, uh, they look professional on the one hand, and when this, uh, with this uh, message easy to relate to by the broader audience or uh, specific target audience, uh, fantastic things that we're seeing. Right, thank you. There are two questions uh, from uh, foreign journalists. Uh, they're, they're the same, more or less. Uh, what kind of additional assistance uh, do you uh, require from from abroad Sergei. so any ways to help sergey yes uh, we are working on the international solidarity list uh, to connect uh, companies uh, that can support we're working in the cultural domain for this reason there will be a detailed uh, instruction ways to help a detailed manual first of all this needs to be written, uh, so people must write about this. This must be made aware. Uh, that will, people people must be made aware of that. Uh, many people simply don't know. Tuzinfm.by, we will uh, give that what everyone can do for Belarus. From signing a letter to solidarity or uh, making the Belarusian topic uh, a subtopic in their statements or in hashtags and social media, for artists, uh, for musicians uh, that could be, well, uh, live sets uh, from their studios, from their apartments dedicated to Belarus. Uh, donations can be hooked up uh, that can be uh, channeled uh, to feed the fund. Uh, this could be the contest uh, or some uh, dedication to Belarus, uh, movies, video clips, uh, plays, performances, like the Lithuanian uh, Opera House engaged Margareta Lauchuk and she dedicated uh, her performance uh, to doctors, to minors, to athletes, uh, well, to various uh, people, to various uh, categories of people, threat of people that uh, supported uh, this movement. So there are many ways to help and uh, pretty much everyone from abroad uh, can uh, do their bit, uh, can contribute. Uh, so we just need to popularize this. We need to make people aware of that. Olga, something from you on that? Well, I don't really know. Sergey really covered everything nicely. I only believe that uh, there will be more conversation with us as equals, equal partners. I believe that we can exchange experiences, we can do joint projects. I believe that uh, things happening in Belarus uh, 
Well, it's a significant contribution to democratic changes globally. Uh, that's uh, to elaborate on everything that Sergei has said. Uh, to develop our cultural activists, uh, for them to be assured in the society, for them to be certain of what's happening, because everyone uh, needs to replenish uh, their strength. Uh, all kinds of uh, support are, are, are nice and good. A quick elaboration, I've uh, given a, a YouTube link uh, to the chat box. It's an online broadcasting of a uh, con concert of, by Margarita Rivchuk, Long Live Belarus, Jeve Belarus. It will be filmed uh, in a uh, cluster in a cathedral and you, you'll be able to see when it starts uh, if you follow the link. It's again, to, uh, it's uh, for the people that, uh, creative people that suffered because of their uh, social stance, uh, the, the civil stance. That's uh, getting back to the question what the foreign people can do. So that link, if you just uh, send it around, uh, or if you, if you view it yourself, that concert is going to be uh, nice. Uh, Svetlana Tikhanovska promised to be there, some prominent figures uh, from the Lithuanian authorities. Okay, thank you. I wish to pass the floor to the press club uh, representative Alla Sharko, who wanted to ask something. Olga, who wanted to ask Olga something. Здравствуйте все. Оля безумно рада видеть тебя на свободе. Вот и так как у меня вопрос будет иметь отношение к сообществам, поэтому во первых вопрос к тебе, конечно, Сергей тоже. На самом деле, я хотела рассказать, что сейчас включаются вот все представители культуры. Даже те, которые people, действительно были далеки от политики uh, those, uh, и вообще от гражданской активности, например, известный белорусский художник Руслан Башкевич, like, uh, uh, который uh, очень скептично uh, всегда относился к любого рода институциям и организациям, и профорганизациям. Он, также Алина Савченко, сейчас проводит открытые исследования, оно посвящено искусству времен революции и революции нового искусства, и те люди, которые имеют какое-то отношение вообще к культуре, арт-исследованиям, их можно заполнить ответить на какие-то вопросы, и передо мной вот эта их анкета, и я с радостью заметила там один вопрос, совершенно нетипичный для людей, которые не интересовались раньше вот этим движением между разными сообществами, я хотела бы услышать от вас, от Ольги Сергея, возможно, ответ на этот вопрос, вашу версию. Он звучит так, бойкот сотрудничества культуры с нынешним государством или сознательно экстраивание системной институции с целью их трансформации. Какое целеполагание может оправдать этот компромисс? Спасибо. Justify that compromise. So what is the question again? Вопрос в том, so, как будет ответила на этот to, to вопрос, uh, что стоит игнорировать, либо оставаться внутри so институции и пытаться uh, изменить ситуацию внутри. Uh, they, within, yes, that's что exactly one from my perspective. Uh, that, that's the question from my perspective. I believe that all of us, uh, various groups, various people, we were kind of uh, at our own stages at our own phases. In this struggle, by struggle I mean domestic, uh, there is some limit, uh, but still we can change. From uh, 2001, when I was uh, fired from the Belarusian State University, there was academic process, uh, protest, uh, then there was, uh, I was chased out from the European Humanities University, EHU. So all these revolutionary events, I simply cannot picture how high a limit can we set. So maybe that's why I, I find, myself, uh, find myself outside of Belarus. I was shocked and I, I was desperate that I will need to live with this regime, with this level of violence. And I, I don't know. I, I went to the Coordination Council for that reason. So that's my civil stance. Because previously for years, I've been trying to fight uh, using other techniques, other methods. But I can imagine people that became active now. It activated now. They're, they're searching for their ways to protest. Of course, uh, the institutions are different. There are niches uh, where resistance is possible. 
Well, don't compromise uh, with those who gave orders, uh, the rectors of the university or the law enforcement uh, commanders uh, that uh, gave orders to torture and abuse people. Uh, schools so where teachers are talking to parents and the parents can influence them somehow. That's, that's also a form of protest. So I believe that uh, there are various trajectories here. Uh, everything must be tried. And again, these criteria, they need to be established, they need to be described. It's very important. So something we, we must not do, something uh, where we can uh, find the strategies for resistance. Okay, uh, uh, Anton, sorry, uh, quick elaboration for my, on my part. As far as I understood this question about this uh, well, trying to become embedded uh, into the uh, state system and try to break it from within. This is what we've essentially been doing for almost two decades uh, uh, myself and since 1995, uh, people who are able to see the world, see the picture around them and analyze it, uh, they've been trying to do that for more than two decades. Uh, so right now, no links with the state institutions. Well, there, uh, there can be no such thing as uh, no link with uh, state institutions. There's us and there's them. Unfortunately, this divide uh, can, cannot be uh, bridged. So, uh, there's no way of gluing it back together. So we're trying to prevail ourselves. Doing something in the theater, in the state-run theater, it's, it's just impossible. You need to just follow those uh, who are brave enough uh, to leave the first. Trust me when I say it, it's, it's difficult to replace people like that. Uh, the government, the, the state cannot exist with these institutions because uh, then it will cease being a state. So this is a huge question. And now there's this uh, pivotal point where, where this must work because there's no way back. There's no go going back to. Two last questions uh, from journalists from Hong Kong, from Kaoru and Alex. The first question, again, it's a question from, so basically this is the, how, how, how do you think culture brings about restructuring in the society to bring about real change? Do you see increasing emphasis? Increasing emphasis on the Belarusian languages in these works. By works, I mean uh, cultural works. Uh, well, restructuring the society. Uh, essentially, culture is uh, geared towards uh, finding the common language, finding the unification. It's also self self expression, collective self and individual self expression. And I believe in this way, something that uh, the culture contributes in various forms is building those horizontal ties, horizontal links, uh, trust based, uh, new communities being established through culture, by way of culture. This multitude of forms is also required to build those horizontal relations uh, in various ways. There are different people around, uh, so this multitude of forms uh, helps uh, both uh, keep the diver preserve the diversity and find the common language. Restructuring from vertical, uh, so we, we've seen with one video from one university where some guy, the pro-rector said, we have hierarchy and the students say, no, we don't. We have horizontal ties. So I believe that uh, what culture is giving is the answer to the question about the hierarchies. Uh, focus on Belarusian language. Well, we see that languages exist. Uh, by way of protest within the framework of protest and i believe that democratically in democratic uh, setting in a democratic setting people will want to speak belarus and will want to support his development because it's important uh, for self-expression of the nation this is the historic part of the culture this is the contemporary part of the culture as well the language I like a lot of those videos. Uh, well, somebody's saying Russian and Belarusian. There's a mix uh, of, of two languages. Uh, somebody's uh, speaking one language, somebody's the other. So we hear each other regardless of our differences, be that like linguistic or otherwise. So this, this would be my answer. Sergey? Well, regarding the language, uh, there's been a clear change because uh, previously the Belarusian 
language equaled protest. And protest was, uh, well, there was, a pro there was a stereotype that the protests are best voiced in the Belarusian language. Because uh, it was, the Belarusian language was oppressed uh, since 1995, 1996, the referendum, when it was deprived of the status of the, the only official language in the country. So if you are speaking Belarusian, that means that you're against something, you're against the authorities. And now there's been a huge wave of protest movements of this cultural product uh, in Russian language. And, uh, well, everybody is against, uh, pretty much, and the Russian or Belarusian language is used in the, no matter. Uh, there's no problem, uh, like, the choice of language to express the protest. The quality of content in both languages has uh, increased multifold. There are, well, one song uh, per minute, one, one video clip per minute that gets, gets published on our uh, cultural channel, by culture. So that this, it's, it's like a huge gateway was opened in this, uh, this, this influx uh, uh, of this uh, something that used to be standalone. Uh, now it's, uh, now it's uh, broken through. And so we're trying to figure out how much of, of, of that stuff was behind that gateway that, that, that was ruptured. Thank you. And one question from me. I heard that uh, the riot policemen uh, they're listening to the uh, sky of the slavians the uh, uh, group uh, the, the band called alisa do you want to uh, file a letter to uh, kinchev uh, the, the leader of that band alisa uh, yes uh, there are uh, artists uh, that the riot policemen are listen to there are many actors many uh, uh, many prominent figures that support us we would like to get them on board uh, to act as advisors or yes so all of this uh, is uh, uh, in, in, in process as, as we speak Alice Pilecki I think uh, he was he was the one that uh, used that phrase uh, he heard uh, uh, the intelligency uh, song it's a Belarusian band uh, quite uh, well known abroad uh, it's a global breakthrough of Belarus it's interesting that the guitarist of the intelligence band uh, was uh, put in the afterzak in the police right where, where uh, the car vehicle and he lost consciousness there. So yes, this needs to be popularized. The right policemen sh sh should hear about that. This kind of information. Okay, thank you very much indeed. Uh, our time is up. Uh, thank you very much, Sergey, Olga for tuning in. Thank you very much for being with us. Uh, yes, Sergey. Well, since uh, Anna is uh, not there, uh, it would be fair to uh, finish uh, with that topic. Uh, well, the day of remembrance of the victims of the reprisals and the repressions. Uh, there will be a campaign in the Korapate. Uh, we launched a, a page in the Telegram chat uh, where we've collected everything for our project that's dedicated to this topic. Uh, Hannah Severinius was uh, also participating there as uh, uh, the author. I just wanted to say this uh, because I was asked uh, to draw a parallel uh, 1930s reprisals and uh, reprisals of today. It's very difficult uh, to give an exact link, uh, but just one thing uh, that's obvious to me, something that's happening today is happening because uh, we haven't figured out uh, the 1937 properly. We haven't figured out properly what's happened back then. Uh, communism was not denounced. So this is all passing by schools. This is uh, touching upon the curricula. Uh, this, this is left, from the, left out from the cur curricula. Well, this is not properly being voiced. OK, so uh, we, need, we just need to survive this at the state level. Uh, we need to teach that to people and uh, then Yes, uh, uh, people will be reluctant to beat each other. Some uh, the law enforcement are supposed to enforce the law, and they're just beating people to death. So this this is my point. Thank you. Thank you. Olga, collaboration from your side on this. The night of the shot poets. How it's uh, is aligned to something that's happening in the country now. Well, I believe that uh, one of the topics uh, is the traumatic experience and the trauma uh, that we bear. 
for hundreds of years, uh, for, for this for this 100 years, uh, different forms. But again, the comparison is being drawn between today and the back then terror, the 1930, late 1930s of those years. And I believe that we must compare that. We must search for new ways uh, to describe that, to describe what we're going through right now. And to find that new language, we need that comparison. We need that to draw those parallels. Восстановить историческую справедливость, да, помнить об этих людях, вернуть их в нашу культуру и для того, чтобы лучше понять, что происходит с нами сегодня. Ну и, конечно, как Сергей сказал, для того, чтобы этот опыт перерабатывать и чтобы ему в будущем не было места в нашей новой Беларуси. Спасибо. Ольга и Сергей, пока мы отвечали на вот... Ну... Пока мы заканчивали, пришел еще один вопрос. Если у вас хотите ли вы на него ответить или нет, он в чате. Если у вас 5-10 минут еще? Да, да. Мы... да? Окей. Значит, о, окей, 5. Хорошо. А, тогда начнем с вас, Сергей. Ольга Тимофеева, Глазунова, сетевое издание Репортер. А правильно я понимаю, если ОМОНовцы слушают небо славян, то, возможно, они представляют себя защитниками славянской культуры, скажем, от наступления западной цивилизации в своем воображении. Сергей, ну, наверное, к вам. Ну, э, это видовочно для меня, что они являются, в принципе, представниками русской культуры, потому что все, что с ними отбывалось, отбывалось с ними по русскому, под русскую музыку и на фоне русского кино, потому что это люди просто, да, русского культурного поля, поэтому они не чуют и не разумеют. Я, я не ведаю просто, что у их в голове, и по ширости ведать не хочу, но это интересный объект для доследования в дальнейшем что до этого привело и, и, и чему я наслухаюсь такую музыку. Но для меня видовочно, я бы просто это низкий интеллектуальный взрыв. При том, что Алису я, в принципе, да, люблю. Угу. Дякую. Ольга, хотите что-то добавить? Или... Ну, на, наверное, нет. Да. Это же был такой вопрос специальный. Okay. Да, специ... узкоспециализированный вопрос. Хорошо. Спасибо еще раз большое. Спасибо, Сергей. Спасибо, Ольга. Спасибо, что вышли к нам на связь. Вот. До новых встреч. Мы проект пресс-конференции вот такие онлайн продолжаем. Мы его будем делать. Подписывайтесь на Беларусь Инфокус Journalist Network, группу в Фейсбуке. Мы там даем анонсы. Все. Спасибо большое.